Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Broaden the scope of exposure for your business by going beyond the interview. Learn more at www.jmnbmediallc.com or email us at jmnbradio at gmail.com. For every drop of water you waste, you must know that somewhere on earth, someone is desperately looking for a drop of water. Mehmet Morat Ildan. Today, we are pleased to welcome back Rick Eckleberry to the podcast platform of Just Mighty My Business Media, LLC. Riggs is a tech pioneer at the intersection of crypto and water, who is using novel technologies to alert the public about the dying state of modern water infrastructure. He works to offer groundbreaking insights and solutions to the global problem of water supply. So today, this conversation is especially pertinent as we hear of historically abundant waterways disappearing. Welcome, Riggs. Thank you, ladies. It's a real honor, and I'm pleased to be back. Yes, pleased to have you back as well. Wow. So tell everybody who might have missed the first conversation what your company is all about. Well, first of all, what Ruth said is very true. Uh, that is, a drop wasted here is a drop needed there. Um, and there's a couple stats um, that are really kind of drive it home for us. About 1.1 billion people worldwide lack access to water at all. 1.1 billion. Um, almost 3 billion have water scarcity for at least one month of the year. And here's the, uh, the even more important one. Inadequate sanitation is a problem for 2.4 billion, which creates major disease problems. I mean, we like to think that, you know, I, I like to read historical novels and, and I was reading about um, the time of King Arthur, the year 500, and the, the sanitation practices were non-existent. And as a result, disease was rampant. Well, for 2.4 billion people in, in the world today, that's the case still. Cholera, typhoid, uh, 2 million pe people, mostly children, die each year from diarrhea alone. Mm. <clears throat> diarrhea alone. So here's the issue. Um, the, the water systems are stressed. Um, and we're, you know, uh, more than half the world's wetlands have disappeared. And, um, what we learned, uh, because, you know, I, I had a journey as, as Ida knows, I had a journey from high tech via, um, what we were trying to turn algae into biofuels. And then we moved into the water space, but we learned in the water space is that it's demand is dominated by industry and agriculture, which represent 90% of all water usage. Right now, those of us who, who have been stuck in California, we escaped, but those of us who are stuck in California were being harassed to take short showers and so forth, but we only represent 10% of the total use, right? What about the 90%? And we have the, the um, American infrastructure, just like our educational system is a mess and um as our energy, we have all kinds of infrastructure issues that we're not keeping up with. And in water, it's caused by basically industry and agriculture hogging the system. And therefore, the people are badly served. And for example, in Ireland, water is free. Well, why wouldn't it be free in America? Well, because 90% of it's being used by industry and agriculture. So how do we solve it? Well, we're not going to, I'm not going to go to Washington and try and um, pass laws. And the lobbyists are too powerful. Instead, what we came up with the idea was to um, give industry and agriculture the gift of self-reliance. Let them do their own water treatment, which is good for them. They like it. Why? Because A, they have control over the water rates. And B, they can recycle. And C, they have less problems with those pesky regulators. And so they like it. And so our mission became to unburden 
the world, the America's infrastructure, and eventually the world's, we hope, so that the people, you and me, can have good water supplies and industry and agriculture is well taken care of, both. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Never thought about the fact that, you know, agriculture, I, I can understand that. Okay. But industry as a water hog. Wow. Never, never crossed my mind. Well, look, in California, which is a heavy agriculture state, it's still 50-50, right? So the agriculture burden in California is 50% of the 90%. Um, but industry uses a huge amount. For example, chip fabrication. Um, you know, when you make beer, it takes seven to eight liters of, of water to make one liter of beer. And right now, they just throw that water away, right? We have a very sort of um, disposable system in, in America where we just don't recycle. And that's because we our, our water systems were built, you know, in the first part of the 20th century when that wasn't a concern. Now it is, right? Um, for example, Israel, which has a more modern system post-war, um, it, and of course, I'm old enough to mean post-war, meaning World War II, right? <laughs> <Got it. laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> uh, but, Post-war, they built a system whereby they recycle almost 90% of their water. So we have an old system. Again, we're not going to be able to fix it anytime soon. But again, self-reliance enables industry to do so. And that is going to save water uh, where there's water scarcity. And it's going to also save money for, for business. So it's a win-win for everyone. So on a small scale, individual scale, bringing it home, inside your home. What are some of the ways that we can really be conscious of not wasting it? I know this is going down, down to the microcosm, you know. Well, now we don't work in the individual home space. We work with housing developments, for example. Okay. And that's relatively easy to do recycling because you know, you have a central water treatment uh, plant for the development. Mm -hmm. And then, so it all happens in one place. Now, if people want to implement what's called a gray water system in their home, they can do so. Um, and it consists of taking the sink and shower water uh, and the laundry water and reusing that. But to do that, you have to invest in plumbing because you gotta, gotta have what's called purple pipes. The purple pipes are the ones that go into the recy the uh, gray water system. And you can either choose to not really recycle it, just use it for your, watering your lawn, or you could improve it and theoretically even drink it. But it's it's an expense that, that for example, they, they did invest in heavily in Australia a few years ago. Uh, gosh, about 20 years ago now, because they were having terrible droughts. <clears throat> and so um, they heavily invested in home-based gray water systems. <clears throat> and um, it's worked well. But um, in America, I, I don't see that happening soon. So what we're focusing on is there's a tremendous amount of new development going on. Post-COVID, a lot of people have moved to less dense um, areas. And those less dense areas don't have, they have even less infrastructure than the cities have, right? Mm -hmm. so they, uh, For example, we're working in North Texas, which is booming right now uh, between Dallas and the uh, Oklahoma border. It's boom town there and, it's, and they're, they're building so fast that utilities can't keep up. And so we're putting in self-treatment at every single housing development that's, that's implemented there. And that's proving very successful. So um, what we're really focusing on is all the um, expansion, the um, the updating of the system versus um, getting back to the old stuff, because um, that's where we can, you know, that's where the capital is available, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. So your company, <clears throat> if people want to learn more about what you're doing and stay in contact, how do they do so? Well, it's actually not that hard. <laughs> so we have we have a Origin Clear is my company. It's been a uh, public company for fourteen years, um, and 
uh, you know, we have a amazing story, which we don't have to get into today, but since uh, uh, for the last um, 10 years, we've been in the water industry. And what we, um, if you go to originclear.com, you'll learn all about us now. Um, and and uh, what we've created in addition to that is a very important startup called Water on Demand. Now, Water on Demand tackles the two issues of number one, how do you downsize from the municipal utility down to the business, right? So compact technologies for the housing development, for the brewery, for the car dealership, whatever. And secondly, what if you don't have a million dollars cash to put into a water system? Well, we will let, let you have the water system, we'll retain ownership, we'll charge you by the gallon the same way the city does already. And that is called water as a service. And that's very exciting because it makes it accessible to everybody. Because, you know, not, I don't know about you, but, you know, my wife has a very exciting uh, she just got a new building for her school. Well, the last thing she wants to do is worry about the water treatment, right? Um, but if you make it painless, like, yeah, just sign here and it's just like a paying your water bill, right? Then it'll make it super easy. So water on demand for us is a major initiative and it's very exciting what's going on. You can learn all about it at originclear.com. And the what's great is that whereas there's other companies that do this water as a service, it's not, we're not unique, we're the only ones that enable regular investors to come in and get um, you know, um, royalties just the same way they get from an oil well, but it's a water system. And that's very popular. And people are investing in that right now through Water On Demand. Wow, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's interesting. Oil is what made this country boom but water is what's going to help this country survive. In fact, the world survive. And not only that, you know, a lot of investors, they'll take the money from an oil well, but they'd rather take the money from a water well, water, not a well, a water uh, treatment yeah. system, because, hey, it's water, right? How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So is this um, functional only in the United States now, or is it elsewhere in the world? Right. So we're piloting in the U.S. because, of course, we're here and uh, we have existing operations that have been doing very, very well. You know, we basically are doubling and tripling every year in terms of our business, our conventional business. And it's based in Dallas and in Virginia. Um, and what we really want to do is get it right in the U.S. and expand from there. So um, and we do it by replicating. In other words, this water on demand network, which is this um water as a service network, we want to get it right. And then not try and build it in the Middle East, but get a partner in the Middle East who will do the same thing there, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And so we get a uh, international network of partners who then um, carbon copy what we're doing here for their region. Mm -hmm. That's really important, which there are a couple of things that are coming popping around in my head. But if you're talking about the Middle East, um, there is talk about the fact that many of the major waterways there have started drying up, one of them being the Euphrates. And so, which has been the lifeline of that geographical area. Sure. So this is going to be something that's really going to benefit the people, you know, people that where they're finding, where they used to have grasslands, all of that is drying up. So now they have to find a new way of bringing in water, conserving old water. And I think this is very exciting uh, because everywhere on earth, there are things happening. Uh, natural disasters are actually changing waterways mm -hmm. of the availability. So uh, again, this is one of those topics that is just so pertinent right now. I mean, it's like you've been working on it without knowing that you were going to be absolutely necessary you have come you have grown your company in a time where this is critical knowledge and critical technology mm -hmm. and uh i just really admire that you know you've had the foresight somehow somehow you were given the foresight to know that you know water <laughs> you knew it was important for life but you didn't know how important it would be in the year 2023 that's amazing to me and I just look at that as being spirit directed. 
you know, that you were able oh, to do. So this. kind, that's so kind. You know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a very um, ex- experimental person. In fact, when I was in in, in marketing, I, I invented the term mistake based marketing. In other words, try things out and see if they work. Um, some people call it throwing things at the wall, see if they stick, right? But, <laughs> um, but it's it's a uh, ex- experimental mode, like try this, try this, try this, try this. And what we did, um, starting in 2016, we really felt you know we, we I, I identified this this new trend towards self reliance, decentralization, and nobody knew or cared about it. And I wrote a, a, a you know a major article in a water trade magazine at the time that kind of set our stake in the ground, like this is what we're focused on. And and then we had to you know, number one, invest in the technology. And we found one in 2018 that we've built steady since. And then in 2020 with COVID, we, we, you know, we thought the world was coming to an end. I mean, we didn't, at the time, we didn't realize that the government was going to give a bunch of money to everybody. Um, most of all the big cats, but I, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a whole other thing. But we got a little bit of it. We got we got some crumbs. But the point is, we didn't know that was going to happen yet. And so we're like, oh, nobody's going to have any capital. What do we do about it? And that's when we came up with the water as a service concept. That co- the, 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 Those two things combined with the, the, the fund um, that regular investors can invest in, those three pillars became what we did. And it, I can't say that it was invented in the first place. It was something that we kind of just you know, broken field running almost, right? Uh, uh, can't go here, try this, try this, try this. Oh, there's a regulatory problem with this. Well, maybe we do it this way and and kind of just working our way through. And my um, my collaborator, um, um, uh, Ken Berenger, was pivotal to creating Water On Demand because he is um, just a, a super creative guy. And together we built this thing, you know, one day at a time, basically. Wow. That's so investing. If people want to invest, how do they do that? <clears throat> it was very simple. Go to originclear.com. There's a green button at the top right. says invest now. And um, what they'll do is if they click that, then they'll be scheduled to speak with the amazing Ken Berenger, who is, as I say, co-creator of Water On Demand. And he... Is very generous with his time, and um, people are pretty amazed to hear that you know water is becoming an asset. Why? Because you know it's kind of like when a monopoly breaks up, it creates all kinds of commercial opportunities, right? For example, AT and T broke up, and it turned into MCI and the, the baby the baby bells, but even eventually the internet, right? All that came out of the AT and T breakup. So when water breaks up, we're going to have similar opportunities. And so we're having what we call a water tech boom that's beginning. Now, the ordinary investor like you and me normally does not get to get in on these things, right? They have to be connected. They have to be inside. Um, But we are focused. We have a saying, water is the people's asset. And so we want people, regular people, to be able to invest. We have um, an offering for the the accredited investor, the the 1% types, but also... We, we have an offering off and on for these, um, everybody, uh, you know, invest a thousand dollars. And, and we believe that, that, you know, it's all going to be fixed, not just with the fat cats, but with just regular investors, because you want a movement, you want a lot of people involved, right? Mm-hmm. That's how it makes it exciting. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You know, I have another question if I can stop coughing. Excuse me. So water on demand, starting now with um, developed things that are being developed. Correct. Will this ever be able to help those areas that are already developed? And the one that comes to mind is New York City. How would this ever come into being? And I know have to be in the um, future. I didn't mean to do that, lower my hand. Um, but is it even possible? Is it even possible? Oh, it absolutely is because you take an existing business and you take it off the grid, 
uh, you say, okay, um, back in the 80s, I had a business in New York City uh, computerizing companies. And and um, you know New York City, you go in some place in the Bronx that is just the worst possible place and it's a disaster. In the middle of it, there's some cool company that's just making nuts and bolts and and it's done it for like 60 years and and they, they got a great business and so forth. And I got to know those businesses. Now what we can take that business and we can give it self-reliance, right? Uh, so that it, it it can take care of its own water needs and we can do it with a service contract. They don't have to put a, bu- a bunch of cash out. We can do that with existing businesses and existing farmland. Mm, that's awesome. That is absolutely mind blowing. Problem is really that the federal requirements for water quality are lagging far behind the science. If mm. you go to, uh, there's a website called EWG, environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org slash tap water. And mm. if you go to that, you can put in your zip code and it will tell you right away what the water's like in your neighborhood. And it will say, yeah, it's compliant with this and this, but by the way, that's 5,000 times too high based on current science. And because they've learned so much since those standards were set and the federal government's not going to change those standards there anytime soon because the utilities can't keep up anyway. And so you have a problem where everybody's kind of just kind of like going, you know, as we say, whistling past the graveyard, right? Like, well, we're just kind of uh, pretend it's okay. And uh, unfortunately it's not. Mm. But the fact that the people who are supposed to be governing those things that are critical to life, like water. Can't, can't really, they can't do it because they can't, they can't keep up. Okay. They pretty much become complacent with it. Yeah. It was probably a lot of work to put it together in the first place. (laughs) So now it's there. It's like, we don't really want to tackle that again. Well, here, there's a couple issues. Number one, and by the way, the people in the water industry are wonderful people, but they they have what's called a silver tsunami where they're all aging out. Mm-hmm. And right now there are 7 million unfilled jobs in the water industry right now. Wow. So number one. Number two, they are short of finance. Right. Like, they can only raise water rates so much because then you start getting hurt in the poor people. Um, already, you know, in certain muni- municipalities, the default rate on water is 30%. It's very hard to turn off that water supply to a to a to a home that's a big deal because yes now the water rate uh, costs go sky high because they got to go get bottled water it's even worse right so and their, their hygiene goes down the tubes i mean it's 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 a not a good situation so what's happened basically is that um you know like let's take for example compton california a few years ago the water coming out of the faucet started running brown. And the people of Compton, California said to their local water district, "Um, what's this water? And the water district goes, oh no, that's magnesium. It doesn't hurt you. Mm. They they said, well, we'd rather have the water be clear if you don't mind. (laughs) But then water district said, yeah, well, for 15 years, we've been asking your city council for funds to do something about it and they have not done it. And so we, sorry. We can't help. Eventually, that that water district was was absorbed by the LA um, Metro district, and the problem got solved. But the point is, is that you have chronic underfunding going on, mm-hmm. and it's not just Compton, California; it's all over the country. Um, and the solution, again, you know, um, I, I was reading uh, an article that um, one of our Swedish investors sent to us from Sweden. And he sent me a translation. It basically said, oh, we're having trouble with our water. We need to invest billions. And I thought, yeah. Everybody says we need to invest billions, but nobody's doing it. Right. And so you, like, let's take another example, Miami-Dade County. When they first built Miami-Dade County, it was done without any city planning. And they ended up with over 100,000 septic tanks in the county. Mm. Septic tanks eventually fail. They pollute the groundwater they propagate bacteria and viruses. And so they need to be replaced. Well, the city goes, well, we'll just um, invest $6 billion for to send sewage lines out to all those locations. Like, oh, where are you going to get the $6 billion? And by the way, it'll be $12 billion by the time you're done with it. Right. And 
it'll take 20 years and we'll tear up all the streets. How about you just give a credit to the homeowners to upgrade to their own self-contained system, like, you know, decentralized water treatment. That's the, but that's not how the water industry thinks. They don't think, they think big central systems, but unfortunately those are not being funded. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's, that's just, this is an eye opener for sure. Mm -hmm. a, a really eye opener. Wow. So Riggs, how, if people want to connect and, and stay connected, um, how do they do so? Well, I was crazy enough to start four years ago to start a um, weekly briefing uh, when Zoom started. And then we're up to uh, briefing number 216 uh, weekly, every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. If you missed that, just be registered and you'll get the... Uh, the video the next day, the replay. And we we discuss everything. Um, you know, everything that's going on with the company, uh, these various things that I've been talking about, we go over them, what's going on with Sweden or whatever. So it's a way to keep keep abreast of what's going on because we, you know, I, I got to fill an hour once a week. So you know what it's like, right? Filling an hour? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Right. Yes. And I've been, at, I've, I just want everybody to know, I've been to the Thursday and it's amazing. There's a lot that you're going to learn about the company uh, and what's going on. It is amazing. It is amazing. Oh, so I it, check it out too. Yes. Yes. People just and, go to originclear.com and they sign up for the CEO briefing um, and automatically, um, you know, they get, and I address all comments, right? So people comment, tell me about blah, blah. I'll address it, right? So um, it's wide open and we try to be as transparent as possible. We're a public company, so we can't say everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we can say, of course, we share. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. This yes. is a critical conversation. Yes, it oh, is. Yes. yes, it is. Well, Riggs, again amazing i'm so glad you said yes to coming back i am very much happy that ruth got to meet you finally because i was so excited after our first interview <laughs> about what i learned i was like oh my goodness this is deep and you know again people can invest to make a difference exactly in, in the world that we live in mm -hmm. and to gain knowledge of what to not be oblivious to what's really happening. I yes. think that's the most important thing, the yes. educational piece of, you know, our water is a problem. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, it's my privilege to do so. And uh, I, I believe me, I, I love talking about it. So, um, you know, let's check back in in a few months. And uh, because I mm -hmm. there's big things happening I can't even talk about, we'll see what, what what's to come, what's to pass yet. Very All righty, that's a Looking day. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking forward to it. So thank you, Riggs. It's a great pleasure, ladies, and I wish you the uh, great rest of summer. And may your water be pure. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.